Thank you very much for this presentation and thank you also for having invited me uh, to this uh, very impressive conference. Um, my presentation is a sort of storytelling. I shall present here a complicated case which has involved the uh, Pompidou Center Conservation Team for years. The restoration of Shining Forth, a major work by Barnett Newman which was accidentally damaged in 1990 by black oil stains and to which later natural and accidental aging processes have caused further aesthetic degradation. The nature and extent of the restoration and the risks involved were difficult to assess because of the major importance of the work, the risk of changes to its material composition, the difficulty in obtaining an efficient cleaning process without reactivating the spray of oil in the canvas, and the risk of mismatching between the treated areas and the rest of the work. I think this um, drawing by a friend of mine, Will Shank, does illustrate quite accurately our state of mind in such a difficult situation. The painting was first studied and analyzed for three years and then kept in storage for about 10 years. Till in 2011, the NAM Pompidou Conservation Department decided to test new cleaning treatments based on the research of Richard Volbers. Shining Forth is an exceptional painting considered as Barnett Newman major piece. The artist dedicated this painting to his brother, who died in uh, 1961. The work was purchased in 1979 thanks to an exceptional gift from the Scalar Foundation and is now regularly on display, as you see here in the room, dedicated to this artist in the Centre Pompidou Museum. The background of the painting was originally unbleached white, like the canvas itself. Three vertical black stripes, called zips by the artist, stand out against this background and they are the only piece of painting in the canvas. The wooden stretcher is still the original one, and from behind the stripes can be seen in transparency. Shining Forth was painted on a canvas composed of cotton duck and bleached cotton with a blue border secured by tacks to the wooden frame. The grain of this cotton is relatively coarse and the weave is tight. This type of canvas is not intended for fine art and it is mainly used in the maritime industry, but its broadloom manufacture has made it very popular with artists wanting to work on large sizes without stitching like Elworth Kelly, Jackson Pollock, Maurice Lewis. The artist applied a transparent size to the canvas once he had fixed it to the stretcher. Under close examination with raking light, the surface reveals very broad brush strokes. The canvas has been very lightly impregnated. Sizing was not carried out methodically, and the artist missed a few small areas that now appear slightly clearer. This sizing is also not a material routinely used uh, by, by painters, but rather by cabinet makers. It's a product based on unplasticized polyvinyl acetate. The brand used by Barnett Newman was Revit of the Belen Company of New Amsterdam in New York. The Centre Pompidou was given a sample of this product, which is no longer made, and uh, this sample has been used for analysis during the first investigation phase. The stripes are composed of black paint and the right one is painted in negative using masking tape. They were not drawn with great accuracy and the edges are more or less rough. The negative band is treated with vigorous brush strokes or perhaps with a palette knife. The binder of the zips is oil. Like the sizing agent, this was analyzed and the result precises linseed oil. The absorption of the oil by the canvas is visible on the edges of painted areas that present a more pronounced yellowing. On the 12th of June 1990, the unpainted area was accidentally splashed with soiled oil from a hydraulic hoist in the museum. They were changing a bulb, actually. And lots of paintings were splashed this way. 
Seven darkish vertical drip stains appeared, with the oil penetrating into the canvas fibers. The oil was identified, it's a Eagle, 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 Eagle brand, and analyzed. It's composed of a hydrocarbon mineral oil and additives. A coloring agent, uh, carburox and red, and organo red have been also found. At that time, the head conservator, Jacques Courrier, immediately hung out the painting and laid it horizontally. The stains were covered with highly absorbent stain-removing powdered clay, uh, terre de saumière. But apart from these accidental episodes, uh, Shining Forth had also a number of small stains suggesting pitting oxidation with a slightly reddish color. These small spots scattered among the cotton fibers and they're, they're also visible on the back of the canvas. Such uh, particles can be seen in other works by Barnett Newman. Sorry, I've been... Uh, <laughs> like uh, Station of the Cross, number 10, in the National Gallery of Art in Washington. This pitting is therefore usually considered to be related to the natural evolution of the work. An analysis carried out by the National Gallery of Art in Washington on Station of the Cross number 10 concluded that they have an acrylic nature and were due to the acrylic containing phthalic anhydride used to obtain the cotton duck texture. Tests conducted by Washington showed the instability of these particles. They may therefore be considered to be components of the canvas. They seem to come from plant fibers that were not removed during the processing of cotton duck. However, in several well-localized places on Shining Forth, the same type of coffee-colored spots were found, but with a splash shape suggesting a second accident. And actually, I made an inquiry, and I discovered that the painting had been stored for a while in a room where there had been um, a broken pipe, which splashed also the painting with water. Finally, at the bottom of the painting, to the left of the central zip, a, a large ochre stain uh, started to appear with a surface abrasion in raking lights, suggesting an attempt at wiping an accidental projection. So we can say there has been three accidents, in, in fact, and not only two, one, sorry. The scattered pitting of the canvas was analyzed by the laboratory of the French museums. Samples were taken. They were soluble in water, and the residue was soluble in acetone. They contained part of the rivet, and a staining test showed that the particles were not protein. They another test indicated the presence of polysaccharides, and this was confirmed by the infrared spectrum. So now, as my time is limited, I'll go very quickly through all the different attempts of improving Shining Forth, what has been done during this period of 1991 to 1993. This phase of cleaning focused mainly on the oil stains, but considered also the problem of yellowing of the canvas. There were first um, an international group of restorers specialized in 20th century art who met at the request of the director of the museum. Uh, textile conservators recommend, recommended the use of trichloroethylene uh, sorry, I've been too quick, uh, chlorethylene, white spirit, or ethers to treat the oil stains. Then there was a cleaning test directly on the painting itself. Um, the selected tetrachlorethylene solvent was applied with two spray guns, one for the solvent and the other for drying. This treatment was applied during a small using, sorry, a small perforated suction table lined with paper towels. The stain was first treated from the back, and the treatment produced a decrease in the oil stain aspect, but impurities remained embedded in the canvas fibers. 
then the National Center for Evaluation and Photo Protection based in Clermont-Ferrand was required to perform further tests in order to design a treatment that would improve the state of the cleaned area. So I showed this slide just to illustrate that they made different tests with different sorts of solvents and detergents and uh, tried to uh, measure results. Uh, alongside with the problem of stains, a study of the general yellowing was performed. Research published by Paul Whitemore demonstrated this tendency of synthetic materials to turn yellow in the dark. A model was made and an accelerated, accelerated aging study of samples was carried out by heat induced oxidation and then there was a, a test with exposure to light. Well, I, I don't go uh, precisely into those tests because my time is limited. So I just say that the yellowing tendency of shining forth in the dark was therefore supposed and light and color tests were then carried out with a chromometer, chroma chromometer after dividing the painting into a grid of 12 zones to investigate the possible link between illumination of the painting and the lightening of the canvas color. Uh, I'm back now to cleaning attempts, and I shall quote this last attempt with laser, laser test, which were carried out on samples only, but uh, given up as results appeared incomplete. Now, the last test, test which had been done on the painting itself, this is uh, next to the signature, uh, was analyzed and uh, it was uh, showed that the um, rivet had been uh, hydrolyzed, partly of it had been hydrolyzed. Each aqueous cleaning solution tested contained an oxidizing agent, a surfactant and an optical brightener and this brightener provided the whitening treatment of canvas and the white area caused by the brightening agents was still very visible and formed a sort of tide line. As the result of this phase was, were not considered conclusive, the project was temporarily abandoned and the work was put back in the storage area. So in um, 2010, I took over from uh, Jacques Courier as head of the NAM Conservation and Department and I was asked by curators to find a solution to this painting, to, to, be able, to make it able to be exposed. And uh, I made a new inspection, so this is the sum up of the situation on the, on the canvas. Uh, different stains then, with some stains more disturbing than others. So, um, what is funny is that the, the oil stains were much less disturbing than the, than the big uh, dark yellow ochre stain on the left part of the painting and all those little drops as well. So the question was uh, debated, could we improve the aspect of shining forth by removing the most disturbing stains? Do, do the latest techniques reduce risk given the sensitivity of the rivet to solvents and water that are nevertheless necessary to remove the polyvinyl acetate residue responsible for the stains. Resumption of the Shining Forth Restoration Project was considered due to the existence of those new cleaning processes presented at workshops by Richard Volbers at the National Heritage Institute of Paris. It was first necessary to check the hypothesis linking the appearance of brown spots to the rising to the surface of surfactant from the rivet size. Um, a substance appeared to be the catalyst for these new reactions, an aqueous substance. The size, whether this is rivet or another medium, is a dispersion containing from 50 to 70 percent water. When it evaporates, the film contains the resin and its additives. Addition of water a few years after the implementation of the paint may have had the effect of dissolving the adhesive and allowing the additives present in the film to rise 
to the surface, creating a new color restricted this time to the area newly exposed to water. This is the explanation for those stains. And so in 2012, Nathalie Balka from the French Museum Laboratory took samples from the brown yellow material and she compared them with the rivet, uh, the bottle of rivet we had kept. And those results confirmed the presence of similar molecules derived from the sizing agent. Tests uh, performed on samples kept on the first phase of study confirmed that a more controlled use of solvents was possible by using gels to restrict their diffusion. The most recent research had developed products combining a silicone solvent-based isolating barrier with the use of gel-forming emulsions incorporating a small amount of benzyl alcohol in a dispersed solvent phase and a buffer to, to, to reach a pH 6 and chelating agents, DTPA, in the aqueous phase. This type of protocol seemed to overcome the major drawbacks that led to abandon the, the cleaning of Shining Forth, that is, the risk of ring marks and the possible reactivation of rising yellow stains. A cleaning test was performed in a zone situated near the lower edge of the painting. So you see there's uh, on, on the slide, the zone which is very, very white is not the test. It's a lack of rivets uh, from the artist's hands, actually. Uh, the test is just above. A xanthan gum gel system specifically was tested as the emulsion forming gel medium. Xanthan gel can tolerate, it has been said, a wide range of aqueous conditions and materials and maintain gel stability. It, it doesn't need uh, to add more surfactant. It can additionally suspend solid phase material in the gel structure through the formation of hydrophobic pockets within the gel structure. A small amount of benzyl alcohol, 5%, was incorporated to the gel as a hydrophobic or emulsified solvent phase. Both water and benzyl alcohol are emissible in silicone solvent like the cyclomethicones, D4 and D5. Therefore, applying these solvents first as a holdout or masking material to the fabric support could allow us to safely work with a xanthan benzyl alcohol emulsion on the painting surface without fear of penetrating into the fabric support of the painting during the application and removal of the emulsion. The yellow color, oh, this is the, The yellow color entirely disappeared in the tested area. No halo developed. Examination under a binocular microscope before and after treatment confirmed the disappearance of the colored residues. Um, a discussion about the treatment was, of course, necessary because, uh, as uh, I've explained, the idea is to uh, reduce the effect of those stains, which is produced by particles coming from the rivet itself. So there's a validation which needs to be made because uh, we touch on the original material. And um, there's also the problem of get, having a, an, an even effect because the rising of, to the surface of those little molecules from the sizing agent is not a la layer. It's a small molecules which are very irregular in density, depth, and color intensity. And their dissolution doesn't give a uniform result, obviously. So there were two possible responses to, to this problem. Either perform a general cleaning calibrated on the maximum degree of surface lightening, implying an almost complete removal of the rivet of the size, except on the zips, or perform localized cleaning and obtain a final appearance of the surface a little less even, but corrected by a reintegration step. And that's what we've chosen because uh, this option had different advantages 
first of all, it was more nearer the deontological acceptation, and also it was a uh, technical, um, technically difficult to um, uh, have no possibility of coming backwards. While if we chose a local treatment, we could at least limit our intervention and be progressive thanks to this method also and um, correct the uneven aspect afterwards. So um, the, the, there is a drawback to this uh, technique, I must say, and the, the drawback is the lack of visual control during cleaning because the area impregnated by the silicone solvent darkens and this prevents any control at once. The result only appears after complete evaporation of the ZC4. Because of this, it was better to progress slowly and selectively as well. So uh, the work uh, was laid flat for treatment. Um, the process was very slow for the reason I've explained. Uh, the, we had so to go over those stains many times, actually. So it's a very uh, progressive uh, cleaning, so that, that was um, acceptable. Uh, and about the small stains already mentioned, they've been treated the same way, but when they were not dense enough uh, to, to give a vi uh, disturbing visual aspect, they've been left, actually. So the treatment has been as minimal as possible. For the deepest oil drips stains, uh, Richard Volbes uh, suggested to add to the benzyl alcohol xanthan gel a var um, variant, another material, a chelating, an iron chelating agent called Tyron uh, from Sigma Aldrich. And um, it didn't prove very effective, it just improved a little. Uh, the, the aspect of the, those uh, stains, but it improved enough to uh, allow uh, satisfactory retouching treatment. After the cleaning uh, process, some irregularities were observed, as expected, mainly in the large central stain, central stain uh, lighter zones due to the cleaning process and lighter zones linked to the original incised arrears. Only the first ones, of course, were corrected by retouching. It was not necessary to treat the second one. This way, the execution of the artist can still be read. The adjustment to the local color were made, um, so this is for the stains, the siren. Uh, retouching, then correcting, I'll, I'll say. Different small tests were carried out using pure pigments, pastels, dry pencils, and cellulose powder. The visually most appropriate method was the use of cellulose nanoparticles tinted with light by light calcination. Um, the selected cellulose of the trademark alpha cell is more than 99% cellulose. It's totally organic nature, it's safe, biodegradable. And the manufacturing process allows for a variety of fibers length uh, ranging from 15 to 700 microns. So this method is usually applied to drawings. It has been uh, explained to us by Will Shank, who is there on the, on the picture. Uh, the 15 microfiber um, fiber length was chosen and used. A range of four different shades of ivory white was obtained after calcination and applied either with a brush or by hand. Dry pencil was also locally used on small grayish area. So the use of emulsion forming polymers like xanthan gun represents major progress in the cleaning treatment of this type of surface and has made it possible to improve the aesthetic status of shining forth. The painting is now on display in the gallery. A compromise had to be found, of course, uh, a compromise with the ontology and, and technique. Uh, but it wouldn't have been technically feasible to mask the dark spots without covering and creating an extra thickness with a visually unacceptable change of surface. 
the question of the general yellowing of the work remains unsolved. Studies on this subject show that regular exposure of the work is preferable to its conservation in the dark. The treatment was carried out in, two, in 2015 and the painting has remained till now very stable 